all right guys welcome back so we were talking about the macrophage we were talking about the three primary functions of the macrophage so the primary functions were phagocytosis that is one number two antigen presentation and number three cytokine secretion we talked about phagocytosis we talked about antigen presentation now we are talking about the cytokine secretions macrophage perform a very important function they're not only phagocytosing cells now remember this do you remember this macrophage do two type of phagocytosis what does that mean when a pathogen enters a tissue a macrophage eats it up for the purpose of breaking it up putting it with the MSE class 2 presenting it on the outer surface so it is really casually eating up the pathogen to say hey this looks wonderful let me try to check it out what the heck this thing is and then they're just breaking it up and presenting it so they're not really excited about the phagocytosis and they're not busy in killing the pathogens they just picked up one sample and tried to figure it out what the heck that thing is but the other mode in which the macrophage actually becomes active and becomes enabled for killing in that case it does a lot of phagocytosis it does a lot of antigen presentation and it does a lot of killing so that mode is different from is a, a casual macrophage just sitting around and eating up and s sampling the environment around it do you know this is funny sometimes i find that macrophages are uh, big monster cells and actually are a little silly they sometimes sample their own cell membrane as well that is called nibbling they sometimes nibble away their own cell membrane oh, come on i'm just going to eat my own self and see if i am okay so so th these are like dumb little monsters who are just eating up themselves and the other things around them but once they have become activated how do they become activated if you go back to our previous lectures you'll figure out that when the microphage releases il12 remember remember if you go back to my first and second lectures macrophages releases il12 that causes the t t helper zero cell who is really really sort of confused cell that causes this to become a sharp this is a sharp t cell i don't know if you can see it but it causes the t cell to become t helper one cell that one cell would then cause the cytotoxic t cell remember who had this little this is a soldier cell cytotoxic t cell and it's quite serious about its function so that's why it's like it's acting like that and this is the cytotoxic t cell and that cytotoxic T cell is activated. So this whole cascade of function which occurs starts from the interleukin 2 but remember that when the T helper cell was formed that cell was sending gamma interferons back interferon gamma why do I always write it as alpha I have a dyslexia of some sort so gamma interferon so that gamma interferon which goes back and acts on the macrophage so of course macrophage has to have a receptor on it for the gamma interferon once the gamma interferon comes back and acts on this on the macrophage that is when the macrophage becomes active and the activity of the macrophage means what number one inside the nucleus the messenger rna production would increase so that means gamma interferon would cause the second messenger system to become active and go and act on the nucleus of the cell and that activity in the nucleus of the cell would cause increased messenger RNA that increased messenger RNA would then translate into making more and more lysosomal lysosomal enzymes and that would increase the digestive activity that is one and secondly it would cause the more and more phagocytosis so I hope you understand that the calcium is involved in phagocytosis this is like first second third chapters of the physiology if you do not know about it go and read them but actin filaments are involved and the calcium is involved so the interferon gam gamma causes two primary functions for activation of a macrophage so we keep reading about hey macrophage is activated what does that mean when a macrophage is activated via the interferon ga gamma there is increased phagocytosis there is increased presentation antigen presentation and of course there is increased digestion so we can put it in order and say increased phagocytosis increased digestion and increased antigen presentation 
simple. Whenever a phagocyte, whenever a macrophage would eat up something, it would present it. So, j just the function would be enhanced, but we should know how the function will be enhanced. The function is enhanced because interferon gamma is going to go and act on the proteins and, and the subcellular machinery to increase the functionality. Okay, so going back to the various cytokines which are produced by the by the macrophage. So if you see here, macrophage produces a ton of cytokines and chemical factors. So some important big factors are what I'm going to be looking at here. So it produces interleukin-1. Interleukin-1 is a very important fever producing chemical substance. It goes to our hypothalamus, resets our temperature center which causes the hypothalamus to think that we are cold and it tries to increase the temperature. Why does it in increase the temperature? Why do we want fever? It increases the temperature because it is easier to kill the bacteria and the pathogens in increased temperature. That is why trying to immediately reduce a patient's temperature is actually sort of not a favor to the patient because increased temperature allows the patient's immune system to handle the bacteria's and pathogens more easily. That is why be sparing on the on trying to reducing the temperature. But remember, I mean, fever if if it goes beyond a particular point, it can be dangerous and kill itself. So you have to, as a doctor, keep a balance between what kind of um, um, temperature you're looking at. But low temperatures, 100, 101, leave it. Let the uh, pathogens be killed, be fried in that temperature. So, anyways, interleukin one is the fever producing uh, pyrogen, uh, internal pyrogen. Of course, remember there are external pyrogens as well. The bacterial breakdown products can also go and act on the hypothalamus and reset the temperature center and cause fever. The other uh, important uh, interleukin is interleukin six. What is the interleukin six's function? The very important function is it is a neutrophil chemotactic factors. So this is funny. Macrophage calls neutrophils to fight. Neutrophils call macrophages to fight. Why is this so? So let's talk about it for a second. Let's say there is a tissue. Let's say this part of the tissue. Some pathogen somehow reached in. The skin was breached. Pathogen found a way to get in inside the skin, so that is our first defense, right? Innate immune system's defense. Pathogen went in. What would happen? Who will be encountered? What cell will be encountered right away in the tissue? Langerhans cell. Which is that cell? That is a macrophage. So the very first line of defense, well, after the body's barrier, so second line of defense is a macrophage. Macrophage is going to, that Langerhans cell is going to eat up this pathogen, it's going to break it up, it's going to present it on the antigen presenting cell, it, it is an antigen presenting cell, so it's going to present it onto the MHC2. Now it would also secrete the chemotactic factors, just like here, IL-6. That chemotactic factor, what is it going to do? It is going to call the neutrophils. So what would happen is that soon after the infection, neutrophils will be brought into the tissue. That is why acute inflammation is, is neutrophil filled. It, it is filled with the neutrophils. Now, why not more macrophages? Remember this, remember this, remember this. Macrophages are not abundant, neither in the blood, that is monocytes, nor stored in the bone marrow. Neutrophils are easy to call. They are a lot. They are sitting in the bone marrow, they are sitting in the blood, and they have a big pool. Macrophages don't have a big pool. What does that mean? That means if you want more, more macrophages, you need to make more macrophages. How do we make more macrophages? One making is that macrophages undergo the mitotic division in the area where the inflammation is occurring. So they would try to replicate over here and increase in number. Second is the chemotactic factors which are going to go out, that is the interleukin-6 is going to call the neutrophil. When the neutrophil come into that area, they would call macrophages. That these are the chemotactic factors. Those macrophages, when that call goes out, bone marrow would start producing more macrophages. These macrophages are not going to come over there immediately. First, they have to be produced. They are monocytes. Then they have to enter into the tissue. It takes